Welcome back, everybody. This is a padlock that I received from a good buddy of mine, Robert Whitaker. I like to dedicate this video, and I really appreciate the gift, Robert. Good job. Anyway, this was a challenge lock for me, and it is a lock that I discussed in my first book, The Extreme Antique Padlock Collector. Uh, this is uh, a very, very good lock for one main reason. The tolerances are very good. In fact, if you stick a key or a blank in this, and it'll just sweep um, 360 degrees um, without feeling anything. So that's how sensitive um, these locks are. So how did I open this lock? Well, I made a key. And in order to make a key, you have to collect data. And if you have my book, you'll notice that I used a TTT, a.k.a a tumbler trapping tool and that tool was something that I invented specifically for these locks and I don't even own that tool anymore so what I had to do was go from my book looking at the photo and make the tool from the photo so as I said on Facebook if it's something I can do it gives me a warm feeling knowing that somebody else can do it too and so what I ended up doing was using the same Z wires that I used for decoding the new champion padlocks. And that gave me significant range in order to make a crude key. Um, the key had errors on it. And in order to make the key work or open the lock, I had to sweep it back and forth while using shackle pressure or shackle tension uh, between the 1 o'clock and the 3 o'clock position. Before I get away from it, the uh, tumbler trapping tool is inserted through the keyway and it essentially is designed to um, enter the gate of a particular lever tumbler and you have to pressure in a Z-wire such as one of these and adequately insert it so that it is perfectly erect 90 degrees in respect to the face of the padlock. and parallel to the uh, keyway. So um, yeah, it's very important that you get tolerances right, because if you don't, and, and by the way, all these measurements are done with the keyway turned to the one o'clock position. So once I got the lock opened using this crudely made brass key, I was able to take more um, precise measurements and I made a special set of Z wires just dedicated for this lock. And there is no real rhyme or reason. You know, I kind of like this 425, you know, that, that seems good. Maybe this could have been a 0.375. Maybe this could have been a 0.350. This is a nice round number. Maybe this could have been a 0.350. Maybe this could have been a 0 0.40. But I suspect these locks probably wear out. And that means that, um, with where you're not going to see those nice round numbers and particularly if you're using a steel key eventually the friction is going to wear away the tumblers that's how sensitive these locks are so without further ado let me see if I can get this lock to open with one hand on camera and it's very sensitive so let me see if I can get this guy going here No, it's not going to behave like a normal lock when I want it to. There we go. Bam. Got a nice patina on it. I like it. It's got um, a steel shackle. It looks like it's been anodized. Beautiful patina. Anyway, guys, if you want to learn more about this technique, you will have to buy my book, The Extreme Antique Padlock Collector. Thank you for watching.